very good afternoon, sir. Uh, my name is Sushant Kumar Kishwa. I'm a research scholar from ESU and uh, very much fortunate to clear, have a uh, time to clear my doubt from you, sir. My question is, I have lost my spark, okay? And I'm not a very much uh, like, you know, continuous, consistently motivated person. Okay. I've lost my motivation how to regain that, to live my life and lead in a, in a like a joyful way, so to be, regain your inner peace. Thank you, sir. See, uh, the nature of life is such, please sit down, it's okay. If you, if you go outside in the garden and try to catch an ant, the BHU ant <laughs> who is born here, who's grown up here and probably he'll die here, that BHU ant, if you try to catch him, he'll say, okay, to hell with my life, okay, crush me if you want. <laughs> Is it so? He'll do everything to protect himself. He values his life, isn't it? Very much or no? Tiny little creature that we may not even notice, we may step on him without even seeing him, unfortunately. But he values his life immensely. Does he or no? He's got spark. But you, a human being, at least on this planet, you're the peak of evolution, physiologically at least. Yes? If other behavioral aspects, if we may have questions. <laughs> but physiologically at least, the most evolved creature on the planet. What the most evolved creature on the planet means is, it has the most complex neurological system and it has the highest level of cerebral capability. That means you can think, you can remember, you have memory. You have a very vivid sense of memory and a fantastic sense of imagination. An ant doesn't have such a vivid sense of memory nor does he have any great imagination, he has some. But he has a presence of mind about the life that he is living. Because the education systems that you are going through right from kindergarten level is such that it is about everything except you. It's about everything else. Somebody is PhD in tourism, somebody is PhD in biotechnology, somebody is PhD in something. Nothing about this. How does this function? There is no attention at all. A human being functions. You know, you have a Kalabhairava temple here. What this means is, a human being exists in three times. He lives because of the richness of his memory, how rich is your memory determines what you will do and what you will not do right now, isn't it so? So memory is important, the present experience is important and how vivid is your imagination for tomorrow is very important. Right now the problem is these things have all gotten mixed up because discipline of faculty has simply not come. Nothing has been taught to our children that there needs to be… Discipline means people think English kind of discipline, walking like this, like idiots. Discipline of faculty is not there. Because of this, your own mind turns against you. What happened ten years ago, you still suffer? Hello? What may happen day after tomorrow, you already suffer? Because there's no discipline of faculty. You don't know how to use your memory, you don't know how to use your imagination. Your memory makes you suffer, your imagine makes… imagination makes you suffer and you think you are suffering your life. You are not suffering your life, you are only suffering the two greatest faculties of being human, vivid sense of memory and a fantastic sense of hum imagination, isn't it so? If you suffer the greatest faculties that you have, what can we do with you? If you suffer an ailment, understandable. If you suffer a disability, understandable. If you suffer your ability, hopeless case, <laughs> yes or no? You're suffering your capabilities. 
If you're suffering your disability, it's all right. You're suffering your capabilities. I must tell you this, about four, five months ago, I think, you might have seen it on the news, a young lady, thirty-four-year-old lady, who was a television anchor in Hyderabad, jumped off the fifth floor window, killed herself, left a note, nobody is responsible for my death, my brain is my enemy. Tch, how many million years it took to get this brain to this size and now it becomes your enemy? She articulated this, but this is true with almost ninety percent of the human beings, they are suffering their own intelligence, isn't it? If you take away half their brain, if you take away half their brain, they will be peaceful. <laughs> yes. And that is why a whole bunch of idiots are going about saying that the ultimate goal of life is peace of mind. Such people will only rest in peace <laughs> Now you, young man, university life, if somebody is not keying you up all the time, it could become too easy, you know. Even I remember, when I went to the university, most of the time we were in the canteen, not in the garden. The easiest part of my life was university <laughs> uh, I think uh, I know nobody is going to like it and… Uh, but I think this university time must be shortened unless somebody is producing something brilliant. They must be chucked out within three to four years' time, everybody. If they're doing something very focused and very intense, they must stay. Otherwise, see this is all I'm telling all of you young people, do whatever the hell you want in your life. But you must be intensely focused on something. If you're not investing in anything, your life, it will just go waste. Because as I told you in the very beginning, one basic ingredient of your life is time and this is just going away. Already you're two hours closer to your grave since I came here. <laughs> yes or no? Yes. Two hours closer to Manikarnika <laughs> Yes or no? Yes. yes, you are not immortal, it's just a limited amount of time. Are you a precious life, I'm asking? Yes. Is your life precious to you? Yes. Then you must decide where you want to invest this life. If this is precious, if this is worthless, throw it somewhere. If this is precious, invest in something worthwhile, isn't it? So if you invest this in something wor worthwhile, not spark, you will be a flame all the time. <laughs>